Hi everyone, my name is Nimare Beilu and I am NAMI Delaware's Diversity and Equity Fellow. Uh, each month we do different conversations around the topic of mental health with different members of our community. Uh, today to kick off this year, 2023, this is our first one of this new year. Um, I'm so excited I have Pastor Fred Hanna with us today um, and we're going to be talking about religion and mental health and what that means and what that relationship looks like. Uh, but before we get started, uh, Pastor Fred, would you like to tell everybody a little bit more about yourself? Uh, sure. Um, I have been pastoring in the Presbyterian Church for uh, about 15 years now. Uh, it's a second career for me. Um, my first career was in um, pharmaceuticals uh, as a microbiologist, uh, which I did for nearly 20 years. So I started that when I was like three years old, but uh, <laughs> but uh, it's a second career for me. And um, I am a, I've been a pastor in PCUSA, the Presbyterian Church of America, uh, over the course of that time, uh, right after graduating from seminary. Uh, I attended seminary at New Brunswick Theological Seminary in New Jersey. Um, I also hold a master's in education, almost a doctorate in education and a master's in social work. So I love school. Um, I can tell. I love that. Well educated, though. It's it's great because it's also you have quite a range, yeah. um, which is great for this conversation. You know, um, something we always say at NAMI is that everyone, just like they have physical health, they have mental health. Um, but sometimes it's hard for people to really understand or grasp that sometimes you need a little bit more help in the mental health area, because just like there's physical illness, there's mental illness as well. Um, but it seems a lot of times that people really have a tough time acknowledging that, especially if they're religious, because they feel like they should be able to lend those troubles, you know, to God, right? And not have to maybe seek other help. Like what is what's your thoughts on that, on that relationship? I think the uh, relationship between, and I, I hear you saying more religion, um, although we could be talking about spirituality as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to make the distinction and, and how I look at those terms, uh, spirituality to me would be a connection to a higher power. Religion would be more of a connection to a maybe a community of faith, but more so a system of rites and rituals and traditions that make up a particular um, faith community. But uh, in my experience as a Christian pastor and as a Christian uh, certainly there are some uh, hindrances that faith can uh, put up when it comes to mental health, uh, right along the lines of what you are, uh, what you articulated. I think religion can be a hindrance or it can be a help. And uh, when you talk about how the church has oftentimes, and I experienced this myself early on in my faith walk, um, the church can at times tell you, just rely on God, just have faith. Um, just pray more. God will take care of you. And it almost stigmatizes, or not almost, it, it actually stigmatizes mental health as a modality for healing. Um, everything depends on God and God alone. And if you have enough faith, then things will take care of themselves. Um, I've also experienced where um, um, religion um, can tell you that uh, the reason why you feel the way you feel or experience uh, what you experience um, in terms of adversity, uh, psychologically, uh, mentally, is because there's some sin in your life or some separation between you and God. And so, you know, instead of, uh, you know, you have borderline personality disorder or you have anxiety disorder or you're suffering with depression, there's some separation between you and God that's causing you to feel that way. Um, and I don't think those things are completely separate. I think that you can have both and um, not either or. And I think the churches instead of need, uh, churches, uh, religion, uh, spirituality can be more of a help than a hindrance if we help people to understand that you can have faith and, and, and you can pray. And, and as a person of faith, I would say you should pray, but you can also have a therapist. I can pray and then I can call up my therapist and make an appointment and I can sit down uh, with my therapist and, and I could get my healing through both of those modalities. In fact, talking to my therapist might teach me some things about my emotions and 
uh, my behaviors and the way I think that I can put together and say, aha. Um, and and it, it could almost be as though uh, God healed me by leading me to a good therapist. <laughs> you know, So I think they can, I think uh, religious communities need to embrace uh, the importance of mental health and the importance of culturally competent, uh, 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 vocationally competent, uh, good mental health uh, practitioners. Absolutely. I could not agree more. I say, you know, sometimes God gives you the tools. I think we all want the answers, but sometimes what you get is the tools to help lead you to the answers. Um, now, it seems like you're very open and um, comfortable with um, the thought of, you know, getting a therapist and things like that. Has mental health been an area that you've always been open to, or is it something that you've had to work with over time to be more accepting of and more um, knowledgeable about? I don't think that I've ever had um, any kind of aversion to um, help in terms of mental health. Um, not in my, in fact, if someone told me that, you know, God will heal you and you don't need, let's even talk physical health. Um, you know, I, I, I think modern, modern medicine is a miracle and um, that God allows us to understand things and to create uh, ways of attacking disease. I'm, you know, first trade as a microbiologist. So all of that really comes together for me. So I never had an aversion to mental health um, uh, help um, in the way of mental health therapy or mental health um, professionals myself. I would say that I became more aware of the importance of maintaining your mental health. Uh, being cognizant, having an awareness of your your feelings and what's going on uh, with you internally in that way, as a result of my own life experiences, uh, being a Christian and experiencing being down or having uh, emotions that I couldn't quite make sense of and deciding I want to go to therapy and finding help there. Um, it opened me up even more. In fact, I would say that that's what made me want to go back to school and, uh, in 2021 and get an MSW and uh, uh, work as a, uh, a clinical social worker is that my understanding that even as a pastor for 15 years, there's some things that I could help people with, um, but there's a ceiling to my expertise. And at pastoring a church, I pastored a church in West Philadelphia uh, for nearly five years. Um, I, I have a scene in my head that I remember sitting in the hallway of that church one day. Um, we had uh, NA meetings and AA meetings in the church, and I would sit in the hallway and I would greet people going in and out, made a lot of friends, and a lot of folks came to church from those meetings. Uh, but I was sitting in that hallway one day and I realized that, you know, we're telling people to pray about addiction and pray about this situation and that situation. People are living in structural poverty. Uh, people are living with syst systemic uh, racism. Uh, people are dealing with all of these issues. And one of the biggest issues here is mental health. It's not spiritual. Uh, some faiths interpret mental health as spiritual, but uh, it's not spiritual. It's a, a mental health issue. And I realized that with my... 90 plus credits in seminary, and I joke and say I paid $30,000 for my seminary degree, I didn't have the tools to help people uh, with their mental health. Pastoral counseling wasn't enough. I needed something that helped me to understand what's going on inside of someone to help me be able to look at a DSM-5 and say, okay, these things make sense, and this is how you treat these things and, and to go and take a course on uh, trauma-informed cognitive behavioral therapy and DBT and those things and be able to sit down with the person and counsel them that way was a lot more helpful than me sitting down and saying, let's, let's join hands and pray. Mm. Do you think that it was your background in biology that made you, that made it easier for you to accept sort of both? Because I've found sometimes in practicing, like you mentioned, with all of your 
all of your work, I usually call it theology, but like with all of your work to be a, to be a pastor, mental health isn't necessarily an area that's touched on, um, though I wish, I wish it was part of that curriculum. Um, but do you think that, it, and because it's not an area that's touched on, I find sometimes there's pushback from clergy or from faith leaders in introducing the topics of mental health or seeing a therapist. Um, do you think that your background in science, because you already kind of had that, that merging in your mind made it easier for you to accept it? Absolutely. Um, I'm an analytical thinker and to, to a fault. Um, I'm a cynic and a skeptic and, <laughs> and an analytical thinker. And so I have to be able to process things. Uh, people would often ask me, how does a microbiologist become a pastor? And in my mind, it makes sense because as a microbiologist, you want to break things down to their smallest component and then figure out how all those things fit back together. And for me, that's what my theological journey, my spiritual journey has been. Um, it's been this uh, deconstruction and reconstruction of faith and this evolution into a faith that I think is my own. Um, uh, certainly, as in my time as a pastor, I'll tell people this. It was only 23 years ago um, that I decided that a life of faith was important and that this was a path that I wanted to follow. But my faith, my theology, my understanding of God and myself has changed radically in those 23 years because of constantly taking it apart and putting it back together again. And how would you, like if you have a, fr a fellow clergyman who is giving a little bit of pushback, but you want to like encourage them to either you know, like we offer like a mental health first aid or there's different courses you can take. Um, what would that conversation kind of look like to encourage other people, other faith leaders to um, be more accepting of mental health and learn more about it to help their members? Well, I think one way is how we interpret stories. Um, again, I, um, I embrace uh, the pluralism of uh, of, of faith and theology, but my tradition is Christian. So uh, when I look at the Bible and I interpret faith stories, if you listen to me preach on a typical Sunday, I look at patterns and principles and relate them to ideas around mental health and mental wellness. Um, and so I can uh, kind of bridge those that divide and bring those concepts together. Uh, I think we can even uh, speculate that Jesus was a bit of a therapist uh, <laughs> in the way that uh, he dealt with people. And so we can use those stories uh, more metaphorically um, to show the importance of mental health and how Jesus actually encountered people at, their, at the place of their emotions and uh, their experiences and the healing started before any miracle occurred. Um, and so I think that's important, but I also think it's important to um, help people embrace who they are and where they are. You don't have to accept my perspective on mental health as a pastor. Um, and I'm not gonna force that on anyone. Um, I'm gonna uh, embrace you and what you believe and kind of take that social worker strength-based perspective. And we're gonna take what's positive in that and we're gonna see what we can do to connect the people you encounter uh, within your sphere of influence to resources that might be helpful to them. Uh, so when I think about that, I think about how churches can be access points for mental health. Um, uh, we can connect people to mental health resources. For me personally, I wanna do something a little different. I'd like for our church to be a, um, um, a community-based organization that actually has uh, competent uh, mental health professionals working on site so you can get that care there or you can get a referral, but every church doesn't have to do that. Um, some churches can just say, I know a guy you can talk to, and that's fine um, if, they, if, they, if that's what they believe. If you want to just pray about it, you know, I think you got to do more than pray, but that's my opinion. <laughs> well, I'm, you know, on the other side of that, because we talked about the faith leaders, um, their parishioners or the members of the congregation, um, with your knowledge in social work, 
um, and your faith? Is there something that you, are there signs that you look for to reach out to somebody more to maybe suggest to them to get additional help? And like, how would that conversation like look like? So it doesn't seem like you're just trying to say, hey, I think you need to go see a therapist because that can be very offensive to people sometimes. But if you see actual warning signs or see that they actually need additional help and support, how do you approach that? Yeah, and that's an interesting question for me as a um, someone who has pastored for almost 15 years and then someone who just completed a, a social work program because it's a little different. It used to be that uh, when people would come and sit with me for pastoral counseling, because of my appreciation for therapy, I would often start these uh, introductory sessions. Somewhere in the introductory introductory session, I would say to them, as a pastor, there's a limit on my expertise. If you come in in crisis, um, maybe it's a marital counseling, uh, maybe it's a personal issue, maybe it's a problem with a child, a family um, issue. Somewhere in that introductory conversation, I'm gonna say, there's a ceiling uh, and a limit to my expertise. And I'm going to work with you within uh, my knowledge base and what I know. But if we get to a point where I believe a different kind of help is going to be more beneficial for you, I'm going to refer you to somebody. I'm going to refer you to a therapist. And uh, I just want people to know that up front that that's something that I believe in. Um, now, having this social work training, it's uh, a little different. I had an experience with a young man recently and without going into details of his story, I've been having, knowing this young man for about five years, five or six years, uh, but uh, I wasn't a social worker five or six years ago. And I had a conversation with him recently where I said, you know, the last time we talked, we hadn't seen each other in maybe a year and a half. I said, the last time we talked, um, there were things that I didn't know that I know now. And I can provide you with a different kind of help now than I could then. If you're interested, I'd love for you to come and sit down and let's have a conversation. Let's, let's talk about addiction and let's talk about your mental health and let's see where that conversation goes. And he was very open to coming and having that conversation. And so our, our relationship kind of evolved to where um, I'm not just a, a pastor, but also someone who can come alongside and talk about some other things that he's dealing with. And I know that you mentioned earlier, um, you know, mentioned a little bit about how sometimes God gives you the tools. Um, so if there were, uh, you know, a member of the congregation who, who came to you and was thinking of seeking help, but was also a little bit hesitant because they are worried about how that makes them look, if they feel like it shows a sign that they're not as faithful as they should, like, how would you help ease those concerns? And then um, what would you say to them to help them um, go get that help that they're thinking of getting? Uh, well, I think it's a that's situational. So, you know, I would have to have some knowledge of the individual. In my mind, what I would probably do is something akin to um, something that blends pastoral counseling and and, and perhaps uh, the beginnings of uh, mental health uh, therapy. Um, I've always taken the approach to gather information um, and listen. And so a session that allowed me to gather information and listen would be very much like an intake session that I would do as a, as a, with a client as an outpatient um, therapist. So I think the bringing those, these, different schools of thought together can be very helpful in a situation like that. Um, you know, hopefully I'll be able to identify some things that can help that individual one way or another. I had someone come to me recently and um, they wanted therapy and we talked and, um, and this was through the church. And I had to be very clear, are you coming to me as, a, as your pastor or as you, are you coming to me because you want therapy from a clinician. And they weren't really sure. Um, they were leaning towards they needed therapy. Uh, but after the conversation we had, it, it was clear to me that they didn't need any therapy. 
um, at that point, not not anything major. I think we could all benefit from therapy, uh, quite honestly. Um, it, it wasn't anything major uh, that jumped out at me. Um, and so I was able to just do some pastoral counseling and kind of affirm and encourage the person and say, let's keep this conversation going. Um, you never know. It, it, there may be more to it. Keep thinking. Let's keep talking and see what happens. One interesting thing in that conversation that I, I was able to do on this side of studying social work was after having a telephone conversation, I pulled an appropriate um, assessment. Uh, so we went into that meeting and I put an assessment on the table and that assessment looked at um, trauma. And uh, so I was able to look at the assessment and say, this is a one, uh, you know, this is a score of a one um, in my conversation. I don't see anything really jumping out at me. It's something we might want to talk about. If you'd like to talk about it, I'm open to, open to it, but this is what I see. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think a lot of it is not a theology or an education um, I think a lot of it is just a feel for uh, another human being in the context of a relationship. Yeah, and I think that that is huge, your relationship. I think it's kind of what it all boils down to as far as you feeling comfortable seeking help and, and getting help. Um, I know you mentioned that, you know, you hope that your church becomes more of a like a community hub for people to go and, and seek that guidance. I love that. I think that that is all wonderful idea. Um, I know at NAMI right now, we're working on trying to get some additional mental health first aids together for different groups. And clergy is definitely one of them. Like I would love to see a class of all pastors and reverends, all just getting that basic level of mental health first aid, um, I think would be, would be excellent. Um, is there anything else that is going on at your church? You know, you're such a great part of the community, but anything else that's going on at your church or coming up that you'd like to share with everyone? Uh, well, I've developed a program recently that I just got grant funded. It's called BRA, B-R-U-H, and it stands for Brother, Are You Healthy? And uh, it is based on a uh, an idea of creating a footprint in the community for mental health uh, for African-American men. And uh, so we're trying to get that off the ground. Uh, we'll have group sessions that are uh, based on psychoeducation and a little psychotherapy. Uh, we're trying to have a, um, a virtual meetup component. Uh, we recently, uh, a few partners and myself were able to get together and we got um, a studio, a digital studio funded that we're going to build in the church as well, which we'll use to create digital content as well as do podcasts, uh, interviews with uh, individuals from the community. Uh, I would love to create a, uh, a, a podcast where I'm interviewing different people or being interviewed around important topics in the community. We want to engage with veterans and uh, there are different communities that we have uh, singled out within our community. Uh, and so we're trying to bring all those things together. A uh, question I'm constantly asking myself is, how can this church be a real resource to this community? Uh, churches and religion are in decline in this country. Um, and so we have these buildings, these great buildings uh, centered in communities that often sit dormant. How can we take these buildings and how can we uh, find resources that help us to make these places real resources in the community, centers for healing and empowerment in the community, especially when we live in communities like the one where uh, the church I pastor is, uh, where it's lower SES African-American people, and there is a real need for cultural competent, culturally competent uh, mental health practitioners and everything else you can imagine. Uh, let's take these places and make them uh, real resources. Nice, I love that. I love that idea. I'm glad that you are able to get funding. I can't wait to see what happens with that. Definitely reach out to me at NAMI if I can help in any way. Um, to spread the word or get people involved. I think that that is excellent. Well, awesome. thank you so much for your time today. Um, I appreciate it. I appreciate the knowledge that you brought us and shared with us. Thank you for inviting me. I enjoyed it. And thank you for all those who are watching on YouTube. You can reach out to me if you have any 
uh, questions or if you need to be connected to uh, Pastor Fred, I'm happy to do that for you as well. Have a great day.